Hello, this is Clermont calling for Friday 12th of March 2021. My name is Maria Murphy. I'm the Children's and Young People's Minister Coordinator here at Claremont. It's lovely that you found your way, if your way here to our Claremont Calling edition this week. Easter is just around the corner and we want to give you a flavour of some Easter activities that we are planning for our families and young children here at Claremont. The following video is from Scripture Union Scotland and it's part of their resources called Colour in Easter. This resource is free, freely available from the website Colour in Easter, it's the SU Scotland website, for teachers and schools, parents and for churches. If you like what you see, find your way to these resources and use them for Easter. It's not fair. These are the three words I constantly said when I was growing up. And the oldest of three, and when I was younger, how late I got to stay up really mattered. But my parents were super strict about it. When I was 10, I was allowed to stay up watching the telly until 8.30 p.m. I thought I was class, but I wasn't allowed to stay up a single moment past 8.30 p.m. It was law. But when my little brother was 10, I realized he was allowed to stay up till 9 p.m. I was raging. Then my little sister was allowed to stay up until 9 30 p.m. A whole hour more. I couldn't believe how unfair this was. I distinctly remember running to my parents complaining, it's not fair. We can all relate to this. We've probably all shouted these words. And Jesus' friends would have been feeling this way after they watched him being arrested and put on trial. Like this was Jesus. He had done nothing wrong. He was completely innocent. And it got worse. Jesus was actually put through two separate trials. The first trial was by the religious leaders who thought Jesus should be punished for claiming to be God. The second trial was in front of the political leaders who thought Jesus should be punished for claiming to be king. Back in those days, anyone who claimed to be a king or ruler was considered to be a threat. And even though, as we said, he had done nothing wrong, they still chose to sentence Jesus to death by crucifixion. Crucifixion was the most horrible and shameful thing that someone could experience. People were put in chains and they were beaten and tortured in front of all of their friends, family and community. After this, they were made to carry a large wooden cross on their shoulders through the streets of the city. The cross was fixed in a public place and then they were nailed to it while everybody watched on. And this is what was done to the hand healing, people feeding, death defeating Jesus, making it one of the most significant moments in human history. Even as he listens to the insults of those who are crucifying him, he doesn't shout back or curse the soldiers or try to get down from the cross. Instead, we read in the Bible that Jesus simply said, Father, forgive them. Despite the fact that he could barely breathe and was experiencing such excruciating pain, Jesus chose to love and forgive his enemies. Jesus wasn't the only person to be executed that day. The Bible says that two others, both criminals, were led out to be executed with him. But their responses to Jesus couldn't have been more different. One of the criminals joined in with the Roman soldiers, mocking Jesus with his final breath. The other criminal turned and said, 
We deserve to die for our evil deeds, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. He knew he'd messed up and deserved punishment, and that what was happening to Jesus just wasn't there. But Jesus' time on earth had come to an end. As the Bible writer John puts it, Jesus breathed his last. A Roman soldier then pierced Jesus' side with his spear. And when he did, blood and water poured out. This showed that Jesus really was dead. And at that moment, the earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. This was a day that shook the world. When the Roman officer who was standing at the cross saw all that had happened, he looked up and said, This man truly was the Son of God. He now understood who Jesus really was. He'd been sent to earth to rebuild what was broken, to reveal what God is like, but now he was no longer alive. In this moment, all hope seems lost. Had Jesus failed? Was he mistaken in thinking that he would be the one to rescue the world? Was this story really over? Or was there more to come? The families in our mailing list are soon going to, soon going to get an invite to our Easter activities. There are a few that are planned. So watch this space. And if you and your family are not on our mailing list, please contact the uh, Claremont office and tell um, Leslie in the office to add your name on the list so you will be informed what we are planning for this Easter. One of the things that we are planning at Minecraft Club is an Easter egg hunt in Minecraft computer game. By the way, we have still spaces in Minecraft Club. If you know any people in your family who would be interested in taking part in the Minecraft Club, it's running now on Mondays, 4.30 to 5.30 after school. And uh, all you need is your Minecraft game and Zoom and somebody to make sure that you are okay on the Zoom at home so that you can take part in the club. Let us know if you would be wanting to join our club and we have a Minecraft Facebook page to register your interest. Here's a clip of what we have been up to at Minecraft Club. Enjoy! Welcome to our Minecraft club. These are the boats that we created when we were talking about Noah and the Ark. So these are creations by the children in the club. As you can see, a wonderful boats. Here are some other creations from the children. A garden when we were talking about Adam and Eve and the garden. Here is uh, Noah's Ark, another one that was created by our Minecrafters. No! 
every week the children are creating creations to do with Bible stories. And last week, or it was this week, earlier this week, we went gemstone hunting, talking about Jesus is the way to treasure that is waiting for us. Let me show you the caves, Aladdin caves, the gemstone caves that we created. Not easy to find. Entrance to our secret passageway. there and deeper we go And here we have a door and another door. And here is our treasure room with a treasure chest and our Bible verse. It's soon coming to a full year since the first lockdown measures were put on this nation and for a good reason. During this year we have all experienced loss um, in its many forms. Yeah. Loss of freedoms that we took for granted. Loss of social contact. Loss of routines. And in many households, unfortunately, a loss of a loved one. I'm lighting this candle thinking of all the loss that we have individually and as a nation experienced in the year gone by. Loss is painful and it's hard to find relief. But I hope that the last song um, in this claim on calling that we are ending up with will bring you hope and also comfort if you have experienced personal loss. It is connected to me personally as it is sang and written by my talented sister Marianne Salminen, who works as a music pastor in the Finnish Free Evangelical Church in Finland. It is about the loss of our mother and a suited theme for the up and coming Mother's Day this Sunday. I pray that you may be able to take something away from it and be blessed. A life well lived will continue to live even beyond the years that one has lived. I 
I saw your shining eyes. You say there is God who loves us endlessly. Even if I'd run away, he run after me. Oh, mom, what's heaven like? Hold on, I will come by. Just wait till my work is done. I got to pass your legacy to every loved one. There were many gloomy shadows on your trail. Many mountains to climb, many fears to face. But you had a weapon on your battlefield. To every burning arrow, your faith was the shield. Oh, mom, what's heaven like? Hold on, I will come by. Just wait till my work is done. I got to pass your legacy to every loved one. Hold on, I will come by mm -hmm. Just wait till my work is done I got to pass your legacy to every loved one There are days I just can't find a way I think what would you do? What would you say? You will go to your room and you would pray. And that will be my weapon in those coming days. In those coming days, I will kneel down and pray until. Until I see